Well, the first bolt problem here is, is a very common typical kind of thing. Uh, there's a pillow block bearing housing which is bolted to some structure uh, with two bolts. There's nine kilonewtons load. That load is parallel to the axis of the, both bolts. So it's a pure tension case. Um, we're going to have to make a number of assumptions in this particular problem, which I'll just write out on the next page. But the first one, uh, before I do move, is I'm going to assume that each bolt takes half the load. That is, that the, the tensile load is evenly distributed between the two bolts shown. Uh, first thing I'm going to have to do is actually choose a grade of bolt. Um, I'm ultimately determining the bolt, which will be a size, a thread, and also a grade. Um, it, it generally works pretty well to assume a grade just based on the nature of the problem. This, is, this just looks like a basic industrial type of bearing. So in the metric system, I'm going to choose a grade 5.8. which has a proof strength uh, in working in the tensile direction. The proof strength is primarily what you use. That's 380 megapascals. I also need a factor of safety in this problem. And I might generally put this somewhere around the two range, uh, just at a glance. But uh, bearing in mind that bolts are relatively cheap, inexpensive ways to uh, uh, it, it, or rather it's inexpensive to produce higher factors of safeties with bolts than it is with clean designs. So I'm actually just going to base this on four. That's not a hard number to, to shoot for or anything like that. It's just what I use to solve this problem. And that's based on the proof strength itself there. So those are just some choices made. Uh, also we're going to have to make some assumptions. Um, the first one that I already mentioned is that the load splits evenly between the bolts. So that was to say that each bolt takes 4.5 kilonewtons. That would be before the factor of safety, so that's without the FOS. With the factor of safety, that load is going to be 18 kilonewtons. And this is an externally applied load, so relative to the bolt equations, that is generally denoted with the, the symbol P. So P would be 4 times 4.5, or 18 kilonewtons. Now it's possible to work through a problem like this without taking the stiffness of a joint into account, but I'm going to make some assumptions that do bring that into account. Uh, and that is that the stiffness of the joint is equal to six times the stiffness of the bolt. From that I can calculate the stiffness constant C. Uh, that is KB over KB plus KM. And KM is 6KB. So we get 1 7th or dot 143. And then also we're going to tighten to 90% of the proof strength of this material. And finally, when we do torque it down, we're going to assume that the joint is not lubricated. That informs the, uh, the friction constant that will be used in calculating the actual torque. Now for the solution, I'm just going to lay out what equations I know and then kind of see how I can assemble them and, and ultimately solve the problem. Um, now I know that I want to to set the proof strength, SP, equal to a force in a bolt divided by AT. In a tensely loaded bolt, it's the force bolt divided by the, uh, the tensile area of the threaded portion, AT, gives you stress. Since I've already factored the safety factor into FB by setting this equal to SP, I'll get it directly. Um, essentially, all I'm really saying is that a factor of safety on proof is equal to SP divided by some stress in the axial direction. But again, I've already factored uh, the factor of safety into the force, so this statement works as it is. Actually, we don't need that. Alright, an additional equation, the initial force in a bolt 
I want it to be 90% of proof strength. The equation for that is dot 9 times AT times SP. And since I am sizing the bolt, what I'm ultimately aiming for out of all this is to calculate AT. And then I'll go to the chart and figure out what bolt that relates to. The force in a bolt, when you have joint stiffness in mind, is C times P plus FI. So from all of the above, I can, I can use those three equations to write out one statement from which I can solve for AT. So we'll have SP times AT is equal to FB, which is also equal to CP plus FI, and FI is equal to dot 9 times AT times SP. So in that equation, I have proof strength, which I know, I have C, which I know, I have P, which I know I can solve for SP, or excuse me, I can solve for AT. So it would be 380AT is equal to dot 1, 4, 3. P in this case is 18,000. Plus dot 9, AT times 380. Solving for AT, we get a value of 67.7 millimeters squared. And now referring back to table 8, uh, I can't remember if it was 8.1 or 8.2, that is the, uh, the S or the Imperial system. Uh, looking at that, we want to round up to the next highest bolt. Um, there's nothing in this problem that makes me want to choose fine threads, so I'm just going to pick from the coarse metric threads and the, the next highest one compared to the um, compared to that number is an M12 by 1.75 volt that has an AT of 84.3 millimeters squared which I'm going to need in the next part of this problem so that's the first result now to calculate the torque um, we're just going to uh, recalculate FI based on the new AT Still going to drive it to 90% of the proof strength. That gives 28,830. And then the torque is given as friction factor K times Fi times the bolt diameter itself. For a dry connection, which is what I'm assuming in this, steel on steel, K is dot 2. 28,830. And the diameter of that selected bolt is 12, which gives me a torque. 69,190 Newton meters. And that's it. Uh, one thing to be careful about this when you're, you're selecting bolt sizes is if you're continuing through the problem to do other calculations, make sure you're pulling values for the actual bolts you chose. So you want to make sure to be using the AT from the actual bolt, not the calculated value that you used here. Um, bolt sizes are discrete. They have their associated areas and diameters and such. So once you've made a selection, you need to use the values based on that actual selection.